a Wikivideo Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Vasco da Gama Vasco da Gama, first Count of Vidigira, was a Portuguese explorer and the first European to reach India by sea. His initial voyage to India was the first to link Europe and Asia by an ocean route, connecting the Atlantic and the Indian Oceans and therefore, the West and the Orient. Da Gama's discovery of the sea route to India was significant and opened the way for an age of global imperialism and for the Portuguese to establish a long-lasting colonial empire in Asia. Traveling the ocean route allowed the Portuguese to avoid sailing across the highly disputed Mediterranean and traversing the dangerous Arabian Peninsula. The sum of the distances covered in the outward and return voyages made this expedition the longest ocean voyage ever made until then, far longer than a full voyage around the world by way of the equator. After decades of sailors trying to reach the Indies, with thousands of lives and dozens of vessels lost in shipwrecks and attacks, da Gama landed in Calicut on 20 May 1498. Unopposed access to the Indian spice routes boosted the economy of the Portuguese Empire, which was previously based along northern and coastal West Africa. The main spices at first obtained from Southeast Asia were pepper and cinnamon, but soon included other products, all new to Europe. Portugal maintained a commercial monopoly of these commodities for several decades. It was not until a century later that other European powers, namely the Netherlands and England, followed by France and Denmark, were able to challenge Portugal's monopoly and naval supremacy in the Cape Route. De Gama led two of the Portuguese India Armadas, the first and the fourth. The latter was the largest and departed for India four years after his return from the first one, for his contributions. In 1524 de Gama was appointed governor of India, with the title of viceroy, and was ennobled as Count of Vidigira in 1519. Vasco da Gama remains a leading figure in the history of exploration. Numerous homages have been made worldwide to celebrate his explorations and accomplishments. The Portuguese national epic poem, Os Luciadas, was written in his honor by Comoe. His first trip to India is widely considered a milestone in world history, as it marked the beginning of a sea-based phase of global multiculturalism. In March 2016 thousands of artifacts, and nautical remains were recovered from the wreck of the ship Esmeralda, one of da Gama's armada, found off the coast of Oman. Early Life Vasco da Gama was born in 1460 or 1469 in the town of Sines, one of the few seaports on the Alentejo coast, southwest Portugal, probably in a house near the church of Nossa Senhora das Salas. Vasco da Gama's father was a Estevão da Gama, who had served in the 1460s as a knight of the household of Infante Ferdinand, Duke of Viseu. He rose in the ranks of the military order of Santiago. Estevão de Gama was appointed Alcade Moor of Signs in the 1460s, a post he held until 1478. After that he continued as a receiver of taxes and holder of the order's commanders in the region. Estevão de Gama married Isabel Sodre, a daughter of João Sodre, scion of a well-connected family of English origin. Her father and her brothers, Vicente Sodre and Braz Sodre, had links to the household of Infante Diogo, Duke of Viseu, and were prominent figures in the military order of Christ. Vasco da Gama was the third of five sons of Estevão da Gama and Isabel Sodre in order of age, Paulo da Gama, João Sodre, Vasco da Gama, Pedro da Gama and Iris da Gama. Vasco also had one known sister, Teresa da Gama. Little is known of da Gama's early life. The Portuguese historian Teixeira de Aragao suggests that he studied at the inland town of Évora, which is where he may have learned mathematics and navigation. It has been claimed that he studied under Abraham Zacuto, an astrologer and astronomer, but da Gama's biographer Subramani Yam thinks this dubious. Around 1480, Da Gama followed his father and joined the Order of Santiago. The master of Santiago was Prince John, who ascended to the throne in 1481 as King John II of Portugal. John II doted on the order, and the Da Gama's prospects rose accordingly. 
In 1492, John II dispatched de Gama on a mission to the port of Setubal and to the Algarve to seize French ships in retaliation for peacetime depredations against Portuguese shipping a task that de Gama rapidly and effectively performed. Exploration before de Gama From the earlier part of the 15th century, Portuguese expeditions organized by Prince Henry the Navigator had been reaching down the African coastline, principally in search of West African riches. They had greatly extended Portuguese maritime knowledge, but had little profit to show for the effort. After Henry's death in 1460, the Portuguese crown showed little interest in continuing this effort and, in 1469, sold off the neglected African enterprise to a private Lisbon merchant consortium led by Fanao Gomes. Within a few years, Gomes' captains expanded Portuguese knowledge across the Gulf of Guinea. Doing business in gold dust, Melagueta pepper, ivory and sub-Saharan slaves. When Gomes' charter came up for renewal in 1474, Prince John asked his father Afonso V of Portugal to pass the African charter to him. Upon becoming king in 1481, John II of Portugal set out on many long reforms. To break the monarch's dependence on the feudal nobility, John II needed to build up the royal treasury. He considered royal commerce to be the key to achieving that. Under John II's watch, the gold and slave trade in West Africa was greatly expanded. He was eager to break into the highly profitable spice trade between Europe and Asia which was conducted chiefly by land. At the time, this was virtually monopolized by the Republic of Venice, who operated overland routes via Levantine and Egyptian ports. Through the Red Sea across to the spice markets of India, John II set a new objective for his captains, to find a sea route to Asia by sailing around the African continent. By the time Vasco da Gama was in his twenties, the king's plans were coming to fruition. In 1487, John II dispatched two spies, Pera de Covilha and Afonso de Paiva, overland via Egypt to East Africa and India, to scout the details of the spice markets and trade routes. The breakthrough came soon after, when John II's captain Bartolomeu Diaz returned from rounding the Cape of Good Hope in 1488, having explored as far as the Fish River in modern-day South Africa and having verified that the unknown coast stretched away to the northeast. An explorer was needed who could prove the link between the findings of Diaz and those of de Covilha and de Paiva, and connect these separate segments into a potentially lucrative trade route across the Indian Ocean. First Voyage On 8 July 1497 Vasco da Gama led a fleet of four ships with a crew of 170 men from Lisbon. The distance travelled in the journey around Africa to India and back was greater than around the equator. The navigators included Portugal's most experienced, Pero de Alenca, Pedro Escobar, João de Coimbra, and Afonso Gonçalves. It is not known for certain how many people were in each ship's crew, but approximately 55 returned. And two ships were lost. Two of the vessels were clerics, newly built for the voyage. The others were a caravel and a supply boat. The four ships were Journey to the Cape The expedition set sail from Lisbon on 8 July 1497. It followed the route pioneered by earlier explorers along the coast of Africa via Tenerife and the Cape Verde Islands. After reaching the coast of present-day Sierra Leone, de Gama took a course south into the open ocean crossing the equator and seeking the South Atlantic westerlies that Bartolomeu Diaz had discovered in 1487. This course proved successful and on 4 November 1497, the expedition made landfall on the African coast. For over three months the ships had sailed more than 6,000 miles of open ocean. By far the longest journey out of sight of land made by that time. By 16 December, the fleet had passed the Great Fish River where Diaz had turned back and sailed into waters previously unknown to Europeans. With Christmas pending, de Gama and his crew gave the coast they were passing the name Natal, which carried the connotation of, Birth of Christ, in Portuguese. Mozambique Vasco de Gama spent 2 to the 29th of March 1498 in the vicinity of Mozambique Island. 
Arab-controlled territory on the East African coast was an integral part of the network of trade in the Indian Ocean. Fearing the local population would be hostile to Christians, de Gama impersonated a Muslim and gained audience with the Sultan of Mozambique, with the paltry trade goods he had to offer. The explorer was unable to provide a suitable gift to the ruler. Soon the local populace became suspicious of de Gama and his men. Forced by a hostile crowd to flee Mozambique, de Gama departed the harbor, firing his cannons into the city in retaliation. Mombasa In the vicinity of modern Kenya, the expedition resorted to piracy, looting Arab merchant ships that were generally unarmed trading vessels without heavy cannons. The Portuguese became the first known Europeans to visit the port of Mombasa from 7 to 13 April 1498, but were met with hostility and soon departed. Malindi Vasco da Gama continued north, arriving on 14 April 1498 at the friendlier port of Malindi, whose leaders were having a conflict with those of Mombasa. There the expedition first noted evidence of Indian traders. Da Gama, and his crew contracted the services of a pilot who used his knowledge of the monsoon winds to guide the expedition the rest of the way to Kalakut, located on the southwest coast of India. Sources differ over the identity of the pilot, calling him variously a Christian, a Muslim, and a Gujarati. One traditional story describes the pilot as the famous Arab navigator Ibn Majid. But other contemporaneous accounts place Majid elsewhere and he could not have been near the vicinity at the time. None of the Portuguese historians of the time mentions Ibn Majid. Vasco da Gama left Malindi for India on 24 April 1498. Kalakut, India The fleet arrived in Kapadu near Kori Kode, in Malabar coast, on 20 May 1498. The king of Kalakut, the Samudiri, who was at that time staying in his second capital at Ponani, returned to Kalakut on hearing the news of the foreign fleet's arrival. The navigator was received with traditional hospitality, including a grand procession of at least 3,000 armed nares. But an interview with the Zamorin failed to produce any concrete results. When local authorities asked Dagama's fleet, what brought you hither? They replied that they had come, in search of Christians and spices. The presents that da Gama sent to the Zamorin as gifts from Dom Manuel four cloaks of scarlet cloth, six hats, four branches of corals, twelve almasairs, a box with seven brass vessels, a chest of sugar, two barrels of oil and a cask of honey were trivial, and failed to impress. While Zamorin's officials wondered at why there was no gold or silver. The Muslim merchants who considered Da Gama their rival suggested that the latter was only an ordinary pirate and not a royal ambassador. Vasco Da Gama's request for permission to leave a factor behind him in charge of the merchandise he could not sell was turned down by the king, who insisted that Da Gama pay customs duty preferably in gold like any other trader, which strained the relation between the two. Annoyed by this, Da Gama carried a few nares and sixteen fishermen off with him by force. Nevertheless, da Gama's expedition was successful beyond all reasonable expectation, bringing in cargo that was worth sixty times the cost of the expedition. Return Vasco da Gama left Kalakut on 29 August 1498. Eager to set sail for home, he ignored the local knowledge of monsoon wind patterns that were still blowing on shore. The fleet initially inched north along the Indian coast, and then anchored in Adanjadeva Island for a spell. They finally struck out for their Indian Ocean crossing on 3 October 1498. But with the winter monsoon yet to set in, it was a harrowing journey. On the outgoing journey, sailing with the summer monsoon wind, da Gama's fleet crossed the Indian Ocean in only 23 days. Now, on the return trip, sailing against the wind, it took 132 days. Da Gama saw land again only on 2 January 1499, passing before the coastal Somali city of Mogadishu, then under the influence of the Aduran Empire in the Horn of Africa. The fleet did not make a stop. But passing before Mogadishu, 
The anonymous diarist of the expedition noted that it was a large city with houses of four or five stories high and big palaces in its center and many mosques with cylindrical minarets. Da Gama's fleet finally arrived in Malindi on 7 January 1499. In a terrible state approximately half of the crew had died during the crossing, and many of the rest were afflicted with scurvy. Not having enough crewmen left standing to manage three ships, Da Gama ordered the Sao Rafael scuttled off the East African coast, and the crew redistributed to the remaining two ships, the Sao Gabriel and the Barrio. Thereafter, the sailing was smoother. By early March, they had arrived in Mosul Bay, and crossed the Cape of Good Hope in the opposite direction on the 20th of March, reaching the West African coast by the 25th of April. The diary record of the expedition ends abruptly here. Reconstructing from other sources, it seems they continued to Cape Verde, where Nicolau Seal has the Rio separated from Vasco da Gama's São Gabriel, and sailed on by itself. The Barrio arrived in Lisbon on 10 July 1499 and Nicolau Coelho personally delivered the news to King Manuel I and the royal court, then assembled in Sintra. In the meantime, back in Cape Verde, da Gama's brother, Paulo da Gama, had fallen grievously ill. Da Gama elected to stay by his side on Santiago Island and handed the São Gabriel over to his clerk, João de Sá, to take home. The São Gabriel under Sá arrived in Lisbon sometime in late July or early August. Da Gama and his sickly brother eventually hitched a ride with a Guinea caravel returning to Portugal, but Paulo da Gama died en route. Da Gama disembarked at the Azores to bury his brother at the monastery of São Francisco in Angra do Heroísmo, and lingered there for a little while in mourning. He eventually took passage on an Azorean caravel and finally arrived in Lisbon on 29 August 1499, or early September. Despite his melancholic mood, da Gama was given a hero's welcome and showered with honors, including a triumphal procession and public festivities. King Manuel wrote two letters in which he described da Gama's first voyage, in July and August 1499, soon after the return of the ships. Girolamo Cernighi also wrote three letters describing da Gama's first voyage soon after the return of the expedition. The expedition had exacted a large cost one ship and over half the men had been lost. It had also failed in its principal mission of securing a commercial treaty with Carlicot. Nonetheless, the spices brought back on the remaining two ships were sold at an enormous profit to the crown. Vasco da Gama was justly celebrated for opening a direct sea route to Asia. His path would be followed up thereafter by yearly Portuguese India armadas. The spice trade would prove to be a major asset to the Portuguese royal treasury, and other consequences soon followed. For example, da Gama's voyage have made it clear that the east coast of Africa, the Contra Costa, was essential to Portuguese interests. Its ports provided fresh water, provisions, timber, and harbors for repairs, and served as a refuge where ships could wait out unfavorable weather. One significant result was the colonization of Mozambique by the Portuguese crown. Rewards In December 1499, King Manuel I of Portugal rewarded Vasco da Gama with the town of Sines as a hereditary fief. This turned out to be a complicated affair, for Sines still belonged to the Order of Santiago. The master of the order, Jorge de Lancaster, might have endorsed the reward after all, da Gama was a Santiago knight, one of their own, and a close associate of Lancaster himself. But the fact that Sainz was awarded by the king provoked Lancaster to refuse out of principle, lest it encourage the king to make other donations of the order's properties. Da Gama would spend the next few years attempting to take hold of Sainz, an effort that would estrange him from Lancaster and eventually prompt da Gama to abandon his beloved Order of Santiago. Switching over to the rival Order of Christ in 1507. In the meantime, da Gama made do with a substantial hereditary royal pension of 300,000 race. He was awarded the noble title of Dom in perpetuity for himself, his siblings and their descendants. On 30 January 1502, Da Gama was awarded the title of Almirante dos Mares de Arabia, Persia. India Ida to Duo Oriente an overall title reminiscent of the ornate Castilian title borne by Christopher Columbus. Another royal letter, dated October 1501,
gave de Gamma the personal right to intervene and exercise a determining role on any future India-bound fleet. Around 1501, Vasco da Gama married Caterina de Ritaigi, daughter of Alvaro de Ritaigi, the Alcade Mor of Alvor, and a prominent nobleman connected by kinship with the powerful Almeida family. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?